so AI, again, is not a new thing. We know that AI actually is uh, something that started almost 70 years ago. And uh, as physicians, we started having interest in AI over the past maybe 10 years. And this, of course, exploded over the past year with the you know, release of ChatGPT and all these things that technically, yes, is AI, but it's not the AI that could potentially be used for, uh, for medicine. Um, in terms of uh, uh, reimbursements, we have to consider that these technologies are always being like with a little bit of, of suspect, uh, of suspiciousness uh, at the very beginning. And uh, look at, for example, what happened during the pandemic. Uh, nobody cares about, before the pandemic, nobody cares about telemedicine. Very few physicians were offering telemedicine. Very, very few patients would accept doing telemedicine. With the pandemic and with the boost in the technology, because, you know, during the pandemic, if you want to see your son, your grandson, you just have to, or granddaughter, you just have to know how to use Zoom. And Zoom is another way for, uh, for example, for doing telemedicine and all these things. So, and after the pandemic, because of this um, boost in technology, uh, even elderly people start using technology in a way that is going to be the normality for them. Uh, so in the same way, and of course with this, uh, we started having the same reimbursements for uh, uh, telemedicine. So again, for AI, uh, I suspect that this uh, will happen in short order. Um, let me give you an example. The NCCN guideline just uh, um, endorsed the Artera AI, um, uh, Artera AI uh, nomogram. Uh, for the prediction of outcomes in patients undergoing radi um, uh, radiation therapy. So um, this actually is making the point that if you're using this nomogram, if you're using uh, these uh, technology that are endorsed by the guidelines, at some point uh, we change the way that we are practicing the reimbursements. And on top of this, uh, the entire system has to consider that AI is not an enemy. AI technically can... Uh, um, be the perfect ally, <clears throat> not only for physicians, but also for administrative parts. Uh, I mean, uh, let's say that I'm seeing a patient in a clinic and I'm going to do a cystoscopy. Um, and after the cystoscopy, I, you know, order some other exams. We know that um, at the end, uh, we need to provide the codes, the CPT codes for, uh, you know, having the reimbursements. Uh, but this is a very time consuming uh, uh, task. And uh, imagine if you have to do that for 25 times, uh, for the patient that you see in the clinic, but having AI that can technically go through your uh, uh, patient notes and give you automatically the CPT codes that will uh, reduce my workload, making me free of seeing more patients or just taking this time and stay with my family. And if I'm going to stay with my family, my burnout is going to reduce and therefore I'm going to be happier when I'm going to go, uh, you know, in a uh, uh, at home, you know, at, at work. So again, and I'm going to be more efficient at work. So again, it's like a, a cycle. And uh, that's why I really believe that AI, besides, you know, the sci-fi movies and all these things, can really be something that is going to improve our performance, reducing our workload, keeping the workload. That is the main thing. Um, and uh, from the initiative perspectives, AI can uh, reduce my workload, can allow me to see more patients or just going home earlier. So I really believe that these two reality, uh, at the end of the day, are the same, uh, are two different uh, uh, phases of the same coin, the same matter. So, um, and uh, from our side, uh, our goal is to make AI understandable and the more people can understand the more uh, um, the you know general practice urologist community urologist they can start using it um i would say i always say that before talking about deep learning you need to a deep teaching from our side for ensuring a deep understanding um and the more you know the more you're going to be less scared and the more you know the more you're going to understand the potentialities of ai <clears throat> again from our side, uh, our goal is to make an AI practical, uh, reducing, of course, in the, you know, uh, in the behind the scene, as an academics, of course, we're going to start developing, we're going to start testing. But our main goal is to make and digest an AI in a practical way for making uh, all the urologists using it and taking advantage of what we do in academia. Therefore, taking advantage of what we do in academia, it will make our life, our, their life easier um, the consultation faster, 
uh, the and even the patients will un start understanding more the technical jargon that we use. Again, uh, reducing the gap between uh, technical medical jargon and uh, the patient understanding that is the key. And uh, we can do that with AI in very, you know, short, I would say very, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Uh, some of the um, of the things that we developed that you see will be released very soon, um, you know, free of charge. And our idea is to bring AI in a, we'll say, practical uh, viewpoint. So practical AI for practicing physician. That's the main thing. Um, just on top of this, um, at the uh, USC uh, in February 2024, we're hosting the first uh, artificial intelligence West mass symposium. Um, which uh, is bringing uh, over the most uh, um, important, um, you know, um, knowledgeable uh, representative of uh, AI in medicine, not only in urology. And uh, we are actually trying to make uh, something that is going out a little bit from academia, but showing that AI can be practical. And uh, this is something that, again, is uh, a matter of um, making AI understandable, making AI digested, making AI, and the more in understandable it is, the higher is the chance that people will start using it. 